Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lipak Shikurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Monday, the 2nd of September. India gets consular access to Kulbushan Jadav for first time. Taliban fighters attack northern Afghan city amid talks to finalize US withdrawal. A Nepal police arrest five Chinese nationals for hacking ATMs. And now for all the details, Indian Deputy High Commissioner Gaurav Ahluwali on Monday finally met Indian National Kulbushan Jadav in Pakistan's custody after Islamabad agreed to give consular access to him. This was the first time that an Indian diplomat was allowed consular access to Jadav, who is in a death row in Pakistan for alleged espionage. Indian Deputy High Commissioner Gaurav Ahluwalia on Monday finally met Indian National Kulbushan Jadav after Pakistan agreed to give consular access in line with the Vienna Convention with no riders. India finally got consular access to Kulbushan Jadav on death row in Pakistan for alleged spying after a prolonged legal battle in the International Court of Justice or ICJ. In its verdict in Jadav's case on July 17th, the World Court had ordered Pakistan to undertake an effective review of the conviction and sentence of Jadav. We needed to have an access to Kulbushan ji and that we are getting it. Probably um, then that will help certainly help a lot in the you know, Indian case. So Indian can actually formulate a, a good strategy based on today's meeting. Kulbushan Jadav was given a death sentence in 2017 for alleged espionage. India denies the allegations against Jadav and maintains that he was kidnapped by Pakistani operatives from Iran, where he had business interests. India's foreign ministry has clarified that Assam National Register of Citizens was not an executive-driven process but rather a court-mandated and monitored exercise. The updated National Register of Citizens identifies bona fide Indian citizens in northeastern Assam province. India's foreign ministry has clarified that National Register of Citizens or NRC in northeastern Assam province is a statutory, transparent and illegal process mandated by the Supreme Court and it is not an executive-driven process. Foreign Ministry spokesperson Ravish Kumar on Sunday held a press conference and said that exclusion from NRC does not render one stateless till all options of remedy are exhausted. This came in response to commentaries in sections of foreign media on updation of NRC in Assam and concerns raised by UN High Commissioner for Refugees, Filippo Grandi, that this move may render a large number of people stateless. Exclusion from the NRC has no implication on the rights of an individual resident in Assam. For those who are not in the final list, will not be detained and will continue to enjoy all the rights as before till they have exhausted all the remedies available under the law. Nearly two million people have been left off a list of citizens released on Saturday in Assam after a mammoth years-long exercise to check illegal immigration. Those excluded have 120 days to prove their citizenship at hundreds of regional quasi-judicial bodies known as foreigners' tribunals. Resentment against illegal immigrants have simmered for years in Assam with residents blaming outsiders, many said to come from neighbouring Bangladesh for stealing their jobs and land. Sikh community held a massive demonstration outside the Pakistani High Commission in Indian capital New Delhi on Monday against forced conversions in Pakistan. This came after last week a 19-year-old Sikh girl was allegedly abducted, forcefully converted to Islam and married to a Muslim man in Pakistan. Scores of members of the Sikh community on Monday held a massive protest outside the Pakistan High Commission in Indian capital New Delhi against the forceful conversion of minorities in Pakistan. 
The protest came in the wake of a case where a 19-year-old Sikh girl was allegedly abducted, forcefully converted to Islam and married to a Muslim man in Pakistan. The protesters raised anti-Pakistan slogans calling out Pakistani Prime Minister Imran Khan to take action against atrocities being committed against the minorities in his country. Last week, a video surfaced on social media where the 19-year-old Sikh girl Jagjit Kaur was seen converting to Islam and marrying a Muslim man in Pakistan's Punjab province. The girl's family has claimed that she was abducted and forcefully converted to Islam at gunpoint. She was on Friday sent to shelter home on a court order after she told the judge that she married with her own free will, local media reports said. Moving on, Baloch activist recently held an anti-Pakistan protest outside British Prime Minister's residence in London and raised slogans against the Pakistani army. They highlighted that Pakistan has been using enforced disappearances and extrajudicial killings as tactics to muzzle dissenting voices in Balochistan. Baloch political activists recently gathered outside the British Prime Minister's residence in London to seek immediate intervention for the release of thousands of Baloch activists languishing in detention centres in Pakistan. The demonstrators raised slogans against the Pakistani army for abducting, torturing and killing Baloch political activists. They called Pakistani army a terrorist army for its atrocities on Baloch people. The protest was organized by Baloch National Movement or BNM. This is high time for the international community, especially uh, for the human rights groups to uh, step forward and to help Baloch people and help other ethnic groups who are suffering at the hand of Pakistani uh, military and Pakistani intelligence agency and to uh, uh, pressurize Pakistan to stop committing human rights violations. The Baloch political activists, social activists, literary activists, Baloch intelligentsia are facing worst kind of uh, brutality by the Pakistani forces. They are being abducted, they are being tortured, they are being killed. Baloch activists have long raised the issue of ongoing abductions and forced disappearances and extrajudicial killings by Pakistani security forces, which they blame are used as tactics to muzzle dissenting voices in Balochistan. In news from Afghanistan, highways in northern Afghanistan remained closed on Monday as clashes between the Taliban fighters and security forces continued for the second day. Afghan Interior Minister on Sunday confirmed that the Taliban fighters had taken up positions in two areas of Pule Khumri and were battling Afghan security forces. Main highways in northern Afghanistan, the Kabul Baglan and Baglan Kunduz highways, were closed to traffic on Monday as clashes between the Taliban militants and the Afghan forces continued for the second day. The Afghan Interior Ministry, in a statement on Sunday, confirmed that 20 Afghan security force members and five civilians were killed, and at least 85 civilians were injured in Kunduz city during clashes with the Taliban fighters. The ministry also confirmed that Taliban fighters had taken up positions in two areas of Pule Khumri and were battling Afghan security forces. Nimaye Dishab, Guru Turusi Taliban, as se Sakomat, as Samte Bandadum, Sohe Zaman Hill, wa Hussein Hill, and Ota Harukotra Doshan, Ke, Bomokomat in Iroi, the Foy Wamneti Avon, Rubarushadan. و فعلا در منطقه بند دوم طالبا در محاصره قرار دارن و تلفات سنگین لده ای ساعت متقبل شدن The latest fighting comes as US Special Envoy Zalmi Khalilzad on Sunday informed that the United States and the Taliban are at the threshold of an agreement that will reduce violence in the country. Khalilzad said that he concluded a round of talks with the Taliban in Doha and that he would travel to Kabul for consultations. 
The two-day fourth South Asian Speakers Summit focusing on achieving the Sustainable Development Goals kicked off in Maldives' capital on Sunday. During the first day of the summit, India hit out at Pakistan for trying to politicize the forum for other purposes, when the latter tried to raise the Kashmir issue. The fourth South Asian Speakers Summit kicked off in Maldives' capital, Mali, on Sunday with the Secretary General of the Inter-Parliamentary Union and senior lawmakers from Afghanistan, Bangladesh, Bhutan, India, Pakistan and Sri Lanka. The two-day annual summit focuses on achieving the Sustainable Development Goals. Speaker of Maldives' Parliament, Mohammad Nasheed, observed that the biggest challenge faced by centrist politicians in the region was balancing climate change mitigation and economic development. India hit out strongly at Pakistan when the latter tried to raise the Kashmir issue during the summit. India objected to raising of the internal matter of India and rejected the politicization of the forum by raising issues which are extraneous to the theme of the summit. Nepal police on Sunday arrested five Chinese nationals for alleged involvement in ATM card forgery. The hackers were arrested for stealing millions of rupees from the bank accounts of subscribers by forging their ATM cards. During the raid, the police seized a total of 132 ATM cards from them. The ATMs of the majority of the Kathmandu had turned temporarily dysfunctional earlier in the day. The halt in ATM transactions is being suspected as a result of hacking by the Chinese nationals. A probe has been launched by the Nepal police into the matter. Indian Air Force Chief Air Chief Marshal B.S. Dhanawa on Monday flew a sortie on a MiG-21 fighter aircraft with Wing Commander Abhinandan Varthaman, who was taken prisoner by Pakistan after being shot down during a rare dogfight between Indian and Pakistani fighter jets earlier this year. This marks the successful return to flying by Abhinandan, who was undergoing medical tests following his release from Pakistan. Abhinandan was shot down on February 27th while responding to an offensive from the Pakistan Air Force. Meanwhile, Air Chief Marshal Dhanua, who undertook his last combat sortie on a MiG-21 aircraft at the Northern Patankot Air Base, said it was a pleasure to fly with Abhinandan, who is back as a MiG-21 instructor. Last sortie on the MiG-21 before I hang my uniform at the end of this month. and. Uh, it was a particular joy for me to come and fly it with 26 squadron, which is the last squadron of the legacy MiG-21 aircraft. And it was also a pleasure for me to fly with Abhinandan because uh, he's got his uh, flying category back. Hindus across India celebrated the festival of Ganesh Chaturthi, marking the birthday of elephant-headed god Lord Ganesha on Monday. The festival witnesses 10-day-long celebrations with devotees buying decorated idols of Lord Ganesha and establishing them in their homes. Hindu devotees across India celebrated the festival of Ganesh Chaturthi, marking the birthday of elephant-headed god Lord Ganesha on Monday. People in India's western Mumbai started queuing up at the famous Siddhi Vinayak temple in the city since early morning to seek blessings of Lord Ganesha. Popular public display of a Ganesha idol in Lal Bagh locality in Mumbai was themed dedicated to India's space programs in a grand 3D visual representation on the auspicious occasion. In neighboring Pune city, authorities trained prisoners of Yerwada jail to play drums in the procession of bringing the Ganesha idol. In the grand procession, dozens of prisoners dressed up in traditional dresses played drums. Ganesh Chaturthi marks the beginning of elaborated 10-day celebrations with devotees buying decorated and colorful idols of Lord Ganesha and establish them in their homes for either 10 days or 1, 3 or 5 days and revel in religious pageantry. After 10 days, the immersion ceremony known as Visarjan is held, where the idols brought on Ganesh Chaturthi are immersed in water bodies, 
signifying divine entities returning to their abodes after being the guests of the devotees. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.